Hello and welcome to the Angelotti studio. We're joined now by Ed Abbo, who's the president and CTO of C3 Energy. And uh, Ed, welcome to the studio. Thank you. Uh, um, I interviewed Tom Siebel last year, uh, right. uh, uh, again, uh, you know, talking about uh, this whole area about, uh, and he was uh, talking very much about the world where you have all of the data. And all right. of the data allow you to make different decision-making processes and, uh, and, and so on. So, uh, uh, following on from that theme, obviously, what is driving sort of data analytics for European utilities? You know, what are you seeing in the European market at the moment? Well, uh, it's a it's a good question, uh, Adam. I, I think you know fundamentally. Uh, what we're seeing is that um, utilities are making investments and in modernizing the uh, the grid infrastructure. Those investments are essentially uh, uh, putting sensor devices across the grid, all the way from generation, transmission, distribution, and the um, uh, the the other kind of uh, source of data, if you will, is actually within the home and buildings, where those are also being. Um, uh, IP enabled or sensor enabled and so um, to unlock the investments the value of the investments being made um, you need a, a data analytics uh, data analytics platform uh, to do that and so that that's what's driving um, some of the analytics that it, um, it turns out that performing this analysis on the data has a staggering value it's uh, you know we worked with McKinsey last year and uh, estimated around 200 euro per customer per year. So, so c can we dive into that for a second? Sure. Because there, there are other uh, vendors here from the, from the meter side, right? Yes. So, so they're smart metering companies. And they're saying, you know, Adam, one of the big problems is getting the business case for the smart meter right and so on. And we've done a report and uh, we reckon it saves 20 euros for a customer. And da, 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 da. But <laughs> now, 20 euros for me, no, I'm not going to get too excited about that. But right. you're quoting a different number. So where's the construct of that 200 uh, uh, euro number that, from that's, your side. Yeah, that, that's uh, that, that, that's right. If you look at it just from the meter perspective, mm. the number the number will be closer to twenty or thirty um, euro. But if you look at it more broadly across the whole energy value chain, that's you know everything from generation all the way through you know transmission distribution to the actual customer. Then the value is is uh, closer to two hundred, actually two hundred twenty euro. And you can break that down into broad buckets. They're um, uh, essentially customer customer energy efficiency mm -hmm. is a portion of that. Um, probably 40, 45 uh, euro per customer per year on average. That is, um, if you look at um, reducing technical loss across the lines and um, in that whole area of you know voltage uh, optimization, that's worth another 50 euro uh, per customer. The Advanced metering infrastructure, which is really the metering um, capabilities, is is a is another as as I mentioned, 30, um, 30 or so euro per per customer, and what we're talking about there is reducing um, uh, non-technical loss, so just you know errors in the metering or um, uh, or other you know, you know potentially uh, people bypassing the meter, you know, etc. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. But that's how that's how it all adds up uh, to. Um, to the two, 200, 220 euro. So, uh, uh, it's a broader perspective yeah, yeah. than just the meter. So, uh, so follow, following on from that, I mean, I, 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 and whenever I hear the talk about data analytics, big data and everything, I mean, it's a subject that interests me, so I'm, I suppose, the converted. But, you know, where is the adoption curve with utilities? I mean, mm -hmm. do, do utilities actually get the value of the data, and are they putting enough investment, both in terms of skills and technology, behind sweating that asset to its maximum? It's. Um, I, uh, um, I think they're starting to get there, but um, as you as you pointed out, the technology is one piece mm. of the equation. Uh, rethinking the business processes uh, within the utility, um, and actually how they engage the customer is um, is another. Um, well, I'd say potentially more difficult um, uh, part of the equation. 
And just to give you an example, uh, you know, we're working with uh, Exelon in the in the U.S. Um, uh, on their non-technical loss cases with a um, with a uh, the prior techniques that they were using, they were pursuing about, um, in fact, you know, 200 cases of non-technical loss by implementing a system, uh, implementing C3's uh, non-technical loss capabilities. Actually, the opportunity was to pursue about, um, you know, 16,000 cases of non-technical loss. It's a, it's, a, it's a good factor of 100 more. And so what that means is that you actually have to re- think how you approach these processes and uh, you know with a technology platform like C3 we, we've done the heavy lifting on the technology side now it's a matter of rethinking the process um, how how do you handle an, an order or two magnitude more uh, cases effectively and efficiently right. through the utility and from that side of things because again there's you know, what we're talking about, like you said, with that breakdown of the 200, it's quite complicated because it goes all the way from generation down through distribution, all the way to the through, customer, right? through the customer. And we're, we're getting to this world, and I'm talking a UK-centric perspective here, so, so let's couch it as right, that. Right. We're, we're uh, obsessed with unbundling everything. Yes. You know? <clears throat> and, you know, and what you're saying is actually this kind of works best across the entire piece. Do, do you think it's kind of counterintuitive to unbundle it or? Uh, un, you know, un, unbundling it um, makes it a little bit more challenging, especially where there are regulatory um, mm -hmm. data boundaries. Um, nevertheless, um, you, there's still, uh, you can still look at the sections and, the, and drive value. I mean, the energy efficiency market, uh, take that as, a, as an example driving customer energy efficiency is is worth um, 30 or 40 euro per customer per year on average it's still it's still pretty um, significant and that um, and that, that number is because of churn and managing churn or, or is that well, is that for the end customer yeah no it's a good it's a good question there are, there are many um, there are many uh, components of it so it's it's managing churn um, lower acquisition costs it's actually making the um, you know, the consumer's use of energy more efficient. Mm -hmm. And this can be anything from, you know, uh, energy conservation measures to actually smart services being offered into the market, uh, such as smart cool cooling or smart heating services, where you're automating um, the home and the home functions on behalf of the consumer within um, ranges that they've, they've mm -hmm. pre-specified. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so even though we're looking at the whole value chain, um, sections of the value chain can deliver enormous value as a result of this additional data that's now available uh, and, through censoring. And, and the change in which you behave towards the customer, because I would imagine that there are a lot of utilities where words like managing customer churn and stuff like that is a whole new vocabulary to them, isn't it? Correct. Yeah, no, it's, it's, um, it's absolutely right. I mean, I think if you look at the um, customer utility experience um, relative to other industries, it's definitely subpar. And um, I think the gold standard um, to look at are uh, the consumer sites like Amazon and uh, you know, if you order a car on Tesla, um, if you've used Uber as a, yep, yep. As a ride service, um, those, are, those are the gold standards. Um, and if you look at those, you can do everything online and it takes you know, less than a minute and fewer than two or three clicks to mm. do. And so that's one of the areas that we're, uh, we're basically looking at and reinventing on behalf of the uh, utility so that the customer experience with the utility can be a lot more like an Amazon experience. So, so would you be like a service provider? Would you say, listen, we've got all the skill set to, to deal with that last mile of the relationship. Let us do it, you know, obviously, white label it so it looks like you but, but let us right. do it for you that's exactly right, right. so we we would we provide the um, the software that runs on you know obviously uh, <clears throat> web browsers or mobile devices mm. that um, that allow the consumer to interact with the utility and do it in a very intelligent way mm. and so they can you know stop or start service um, they can uh, move locations pay their bill um, you know look at what rates are best uh, for them and then importantly, um, you know, make recommendations for ways that they can save mm -hmm. money and then also purchase those online. Right. Just like you would um, 
with a uh, with an so, Amazon. So you're changing experience. you're changing the dial then. So you aren't just being an electricity retailer. You, you're potentially selling energy efficient fridges uh, or whatever. It could be, it could it be is. solar. It could be um, you know distributed generation of sorts. It yeah. could be you know more efficient refrigerators. Yeah. And all this is in a seamless, you know, customer experience that they're used to, frankly, from uh, from those other providers yeah. like Google and Amazon. So, so if we move the conversation on just a little bit, uh, and uh, uh, you know, when I I, I come from an uh, IT background, doing uh, you know uh, media in the uh, in the IT world, I've done for years, and I came into the energy space about three years ago, and I was like, oh, this is this is a bit strange. It seems all a bit far behind, but suddenly you're seeing this this ramp up of new companies coming in who are coming from the IT space, a bit like C3 and right. things like that, offering these data analytic platform to companies. And there's more and more of these companies coming in. How, how does a utility actually judge? You know, what's the framework? And I'm, you know, and this is just if you could just in general give some guidance on what people should be looking out for. Sure. Um, yeah, it's a uh, it's it's a it's a good question, um, Adam. The uh, you know in, in general the utilities are going from the industry that has has had the least data because it's pretty much an analog system to the one that has actually the most data. So it's leapfrogging in terms of availability of the um, the amount of data, which makes it attractive and the business value, as I mentioned, two hundred euro uh, per customer per year. When looking at um, platforms, uh, some of the key elements. One is the ability to integrate with a plethora of data sources. Um, literally, on the customer side, it might be wireless-enabled thermostats, um, advanced metering infrastructure data. We're looking at outage management systems, distribution management systems, energy management systems. So lots of different disparate systems that weren't designed to talk to each other. So that's kind of step one, is a very robust data integration framework. Once you've done that, then the next step is processing the data at a very rapid rates. And um, what uh, <coughs> what we do is we basically borrowed from uh, technologies like Twitter's and Netflix, uh, the same technologies that they use to deliver a billion videos, streaming videos a month, or uh, 15 million messages per second, handled through that infrastructure to actually process the data at over a million data points per second uh, through the infrastructure, <coughs> and then. Finally, where the key comes in is actually um, running uh, what we refer to as machine learning right. um, against the data, which is once you've analyzed the data through hundreds or thousands of, of analyses, how you make sense out of that is um, basically by having machine learning algorithms that can uh, look and learn from data points. So if I, in our customer example, propose that you, you, know, you might be interested in a, in a solar panel, and, uh, and you say, no, I'm not. I learn from that and through the system and basically present um, another offer or move forward with a, something different. So this machine learning layer is actually pretty critical. So that's kind of predictive analytics, really. And that's, uh, yeah, that's, 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 yeah, that's, yeah. that's correct. It's, yeah. it's not just predictive, but it's learning mm -hmm. is the other aspect. So we, we learn just like Netflix does or Amazon does when they propose a, a video or a book to you. Uh, and, and depending on whether you decide to move forward with it or not, those machine learning engines that uh, basically learn from the from the data and the experience, and that's a critical component uh, to these systems. So it's the integration, it's the processing of data at scale, it's the machine learning, and then I would say on top of that, um, having a pre-built system to start with is also pretty key. So we've invested the past five years over 200 million dollars uh, at this point in building that technology stack and uh, building out the applications that a utility can then take and innovate on top of. So when so someone comes to you, you aren't starting from scratch every single time. It's a, re a replica business. That's right. So yeah, there's a lot of point solutions in the market, yeah. but none that are as well thought out and comprehensive in their capabilities. And that's what your differentiator is in terms of that spread across that, the board. That's so, correct. Uh, as we're coming to the end of our time uh, uh, here, just, just one f uh, final bit is, uh, if I could just very quickly, just if you were to blue sky for a second, how could the utility enhance the customer relationship? What, what does this world allow them to do that they aren't doing right now? 
just a single <laughs> sharp point. Very, you? very good point. I mean, you know, right now, as we as we mentioned, uh, the utility knows very little about the customer, mm. and um, with the you know, with, with advancements like the advanced metering infrastructure and other, you know, wireless devices in the home, um, the utility can can now tell uh, a lot. Is the home efficient? Are, is there equipment in the home like appliances, refrigerators, uh, heaters, coolers, etc.? Are those efficient or not? So, um, could you benefit from solar? Um, what's the impact of having electric vehicles in the home? Am I on the right rate plan? Uh, you know, with the utility, is there a better rate plan? Um, are there home maintenance services that I should be able to take advantage of? And and, and all of that will just give them more touch points and multiple touch points. That's right. Like so that. they can retain yeah. the customers, um, improve the customer satisfaction, do everything online mm -hmm. versus having to you know send out mail or uh, or, 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 or send a person out to read the meter to, and all that sort of stuff. Exactly. Yeah, so yeah. this is a completely revolutionary yeah. Yeah. concept, but. Um, readily available in other industries. Great. Uh, Ed, we have come to the end of our time here. Uh, and uh, it's been a pleasure talking to you. It's uh, great having you in the studio. And thank you as well for watching. And uh, many more interviews on Engirati.